later, I, I, I was on my way to Shirley's that night. I was there, in front of the house. It was just getting dark and I was walking up the walk to the house and I heard this noise in the bushes and I saw this guy there. He was bending over looking in the window and he came up to me pretty quick and said he was Shirley's brother and she wanted him to fix the window there. And I knew he wasn't from the neighborhood but I didn't think nothing about it. I mean, he was white and stuff and he did have tools with him. He asked me what I was doing there, and I told him about you and how I was just coming over to watch television. And he took 20 bucks out of his pocket and gave it to me. And asked if I could go down to Eddie Street to this hardware store to buy some nails. And I told him Eddie Street was pretty far and I'd have to take the bus and stuff. And he said that if I did him this favor, I could keep the change. which would be about 17 bucks. And man, I mean, 17 bucks just for jumping on the bus. So I, when I went to open the door to tell you, he stopped me and said he already talked with you about it and was waiting for me to come and I remember running up Grace Street to Washington Park to get the bus and feeling so happy about this money and thinking I'd get us a pizza at the Greeks to surprise you with and like for a minute when I was on the bus I remember thinking about what he said like he asked me what I was doing there and then later he said he had talked with you and was waiting for me but I forgot about it I had this money. When I got back, I had the pizza at Dale's and I opened the door. I opened the door and it was so dark. Just heard the big clock there ticking. And I turned on the light, that panther light in the living room and I saw your blouse was ripped up and your shorts and your bra and I got afraid. You, I saw your legs sticking out from the kitchen and you were so still and your legs had marks and I thought you was dead. I was so scared I backed out. I still had the pizza in my hand and I backed out the door and ran through the Barad's yard over to Richard Street. I couldn't stop my, my head was pounding and I dumped the pizza and the nails in the sewer and I pulled the fire alarm. I don't know why but I did and I did it on every street. And I ran down to the bay and listened to the sirens. They were everywhere. When I got home and saw the cop cars and, and went in and saw the cops had that pinned to the ground because he wanted to go out and kill the guy. And she told me what, what happened. And that you weren't dead. <sighs> I'll never forget the look. The look Dad had in his face and the way Bob was shaking. And nobody, nobody was the same after that. They caught the guy and brought him to court. I went to, I went because I was afraid he, the guy, <laughs> looker. I thought he'd tell about me or something, but he never even got up to say anything. 
at the way those lawyers yelled at you. Dad told me so many times, so many times the last year about the whole thing and how it was his fault because he couldn't keep a steady job and how if he had a lot of money it would have happened and how if he had a lot of money he could have hired a good lawyer. I'm so sorry, girl. I'm so sorry. I just... I could do nothing right after that. I just, I don't know. I drank my brains out. Anything to stop the feeling I had in my head. So many nights I had to listen to, to Dad talk about it. About his Miss America and... I, I killed him. I ruined you. I'm shit. I'm just shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs>